Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here from WhatCulture.com and you know what, it's an inevitable truth that at some point in our lives we will all make mistakes. Whether big or small, it happens to everybody and no one is going to be marching through those pearly gates claiming that they had a perfect run, unless they're highly deluded that is, and as such we should learn not to fear the mistake itself but how to deal with accepting the fact that they happened. That being said, when it comes to video games, sometimes the mistake in question really does mean that you've dropped the ball quite hard, as here we're not just talking about the Jurgensen account being a day late or forgetting to record Taggart for your nan, but unfortunately often the very end of the world itself. Even when charging headlong into battle, sometimes our favourite heroes can make horrendous decisions that sometimes lead to catastrophic, terrifying or otherwise hilariously dumb outcomes. So let's take a look at them today, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 8 video game characters who made the worst decisions. Number 8. Letting Dr. Wily Go – Mega Man Franchise For the amount of chaos that Dr. Wily has caused across the span of the Mega Man games, you'd think that somebody at some point would have said something like, hmm, maybe we should lock this guy up, as it definitely seems that this would cut robot-related crimes in half if not totally remove them with this decision. He's evil through and through, even going so far as to sleep in skull pattern pajamas. So you should never, ever trust a word out of this mustachioed villain's mouth. And yet, despite all of the hurt, pain and turmoil that he's caused, Mega Man always ends up forgetting to lock the bastard up. In what could only be assumed as a programming error, the Blue Bomber will time and time again have Dr. Wily cornered on his knees begging for forgiveness and then just… let him go. I know that you want to save the day and get all the praise here, mate, but still there are better ways to go about it than by letting the main villain escape over and over. However, maybe we are being a bit too harsh. Maybe Mega Man doesn't actually have a decision and this is actually part of a failsafe program installed by the sentimental Dr. Light in order to avoid the needless death of his former friend. Yet if that's the case, then we need to be asking Dr. Light some serious questions. Number 7. Actually returning to work – Five Nights at Freddy's so, let me set the scene for you. You're an underpaid, overworked security room operator for a small town pizzeria. The shifts are long, unsociable and barely compensated enough for you to justify getting out of bed for any of this. Sounds pretty rough to begin with, right? Well, now on top of this, let's add in some mechanical animals that not only patrol the restaurant in horrendously creepy fashion but also have a penchant for, hmm, how do I put this, eating people. Why would you ever, ever want to step foot in that establishment, let alone work for them and choose to come back night after night. However, this is exactly the decision that our unnamed and unknown security guard makes each and every night that they accept a shift in this hellhole. There's even a horrifying trail of messages left for you by another employee at Freddy Fazbear's, who even ends up dying while recording a message to send to you and you still come back. I know the job market is rough, but come on man, there has to be something else. Number 6. Getting in the way of the Doom Slayer – Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal If there's one thing that every single video game villain, NPC and even other heroes should make sure to never do, it is that they should never, under any circumstances, get in the way of the Doom Slayer. This walking mass of aggressive muscle is not the most delicate of souls and is just as likely to rip and tear through his own kind as he is the forces of hell themselves. He's got one mission, and that is to send demons back to where they came from with extreme force and using an arsenal that would put many other games to shame, so you best make sure that he's never aiming the barrel at you. Some people, however, just haven't got the message or even got a bloody clue what they were doing, such as Olivia Pierce, who thought that it would be a great idea to sell out humanity by making a pact with the demons of hell. Bad idea, as not only does this mean the cleanup crew of the Mars research facility is going to be working overtime for weeks, but it also means that Olivia put herself in the top spot of the Slayer's hit list. Even with the demonic powers of the Spider Mastermind under her control, Pierce is no match for the Slayer. Number 5. Helping the Water Merchants – Fallout 1 If there's one thing that the Fallout franchise prides itself on, it's player choice. From the moment that you begin creating your character, everything is left up to you, and the huge range of dialogue options mean that you can make some truly granular experiences. However, that does mean that there ends up being a fair few choices that are just plain bad for everyone involved, including yourself. From nuking Megaton to denying your destiny by refusing to purify the waters of the wasteland in Fallout 3, you can be a bad son of a gun without a doubt. However, sometimes your decisions 
have far-reaching consequences that, in the heat at the moment, seem so insignificant. Take, for example, the water merchants in Fallout 1. You meet these hardy suppliers of liquid pretty early on in the game, and as your vault is absolutely gasping for water, you can actually set up a deal with them to convoy up and deliver water to them. It won't solve the problem of your broken water purifier, but it will buy you some time with which you can use to explore more or go out questing for better loot. But the problem is, is that this now creates a paper cup trail of information. The water merchants know the vault's location, and should, say, the master ever send his super mutants after this group, they'll be able to extract that information and head right on up there and destroy everything you hold dear. It might seem like a good idea at the time, but revealing the vault's location might be the dumbest decision that you can actually make. Number 4. Sleeping with Morinth Mass Effect 2 Commander Shepard, one of the most respected humans in the known galaxy. Fearless, persuasive, and according to the corpses left in their wake, not a bad shot to boot. It's easy to see why other living beings are so drawn to Shep, especially when they're pulling such serious shapes on the dance floor that you could poke your eyes out. That being said, Shepard's smoothest moves can actually end up landing them in a world of trouble thanks to one particularly dumb decision. I'm speaking, of course, about choosing to mate with Morinth if you so happen to choose to save her during the course of Mass Effect 2. By siding with her over Samara, she adopts her place on the ship, and her outstanding biotic abilities will pay dividends in battle. However, this also opens up a romance option with her. A rather deadly one, in fact. She states that she has a rather rare disorder that ends up killing her mates as she absorbs their powers, along with their minds yet reckons that Shepard could go a few rounds without ending up as an empty tube of pate. The problem is, is that this is just guesswork, and as such, if Shepard does initiate contact, as it were, things don't end well at all. Gonna be a bit awkward when the rest of the crew finds out about this one. Number 3. Saving Your Girlfriend Only To Kill Her Far Cry 3 now, Far Cry 3's brilliant setup of a group of overprivileged and undercautious Gap Yar students being taken hostage by a group of brutal pirates looking to hold them to ransom is one that gets your blood racing as you mount your desperate escape and your even more desperate need to survive. Along your path to rescuing all of your friends, Jason sheds the skin of his former self in order to embrace a brutal, murderous, and actually quite dangerous mindset, and the player gets a real impression of the lengths that he is going to go to in order to right the wrongs that Vass and his crew have done. Which makes it all the more ridiculous when you come to the game's closing moments. After all of this time, tracking the group, researching their strongholds, and stalking their members in an effort to destabilize their hold on the area, Jason finally comes face to face with his girlfriend friend and is presented one of the strangest choices ever. Either rescue her, or slit her throat because Vass's sister has taken a shine to you and will promise to make you king of the island and also to rock your world. So who do you choose? Your long-suffering girlfriend that has done nothing wrong and who you've been fighting to rescue for what is now in-game weeks of time, or bleed her like a pig and embrace a new life for like no reason whatsoever? Even the game seems to punish this rather dumb decision should you choose to take it, as after extracting Jason Jason's DNA to secure the lineage of the island, you get stabbed to death as a reward. Stop thinking with your dick, Jason. Number 2. Taking on the Red Dragon Dungeons & Dragons Tower of Doom if there's one thing scarier than rolling a natural one in the almighty pen and paper game Dungeons & Dragons, it's picking the wrong fights. Trust me, I should know about this because I actually stream Dungeons & Dragons over on my channel Live and Let's Dice. And if you like Dungeons & Dragons, go and check it out. Plug, 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 plug. Because as the entire experience revolves around freedom of choice, of course party members are going to make the wrong ones occasionally, and the video games that are based on this IP also follow suit with this mentality. In the brilliant arcade brawler Dungeons & Dragons Tower of Doom, the party can, at certain points in their adventure, accept a quest to defeat the Red Dragon, a hallmark of the series and pretty much THE dragon in Dungeons & Dragons. However, before you decide to take on this monolithic firebreather, the game makes you aware painfully so that this is going to be the hardest fight in the entire game. It asks you multiple times if you're sure that you want to continue, and only through basically battering down the menus with your thick skull will you be able to go toe to talon with this beast. And that, my friends, was a bad decision. Fighting the Red Dragon is like trying to climb Everest with your teeth. It is painful, brutal, and will leave you an absolute mess by the end of things. Oh, and it also starts the battle off with a one-hit kill move that you can't dodge. Fantastic. And number 1. Becoming a Thief The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening 
It's pretty well known at this point that uh, Link is a rather mm, destructive individual. No matter what realm he's in and no matter who he's fighting against to save the day, if you're a pot, box, or any other type of container, then you best be writing your will as there's a good chance that you're going to end up being smashed. He's also a bit of a thief, being able to swipe treasures from other people's houses and sometimes even from vendors that he meets which proves to be a huge mistake if you decide to indulge in a bit of five-finger discount in The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. In this game, you'll come across a friendly shopkeep who sells some pretty useful items and gear, and if you're a little short on the cash or are just a bit of a tool yourself, you can pick up any one of these items and run out of the store with it. Huzzah, you might think, a free item! And so what if people call me thief over and over? It doesn't affect the gameplay, right? Well, my felonious friend, this may be true, but if you were to ever return to the store, you'll be made to immediately regret your decision. For now, the shopkeeper unleashes a barrage of insults and then shocks you to death for your thievery. Ooh, definitely wasn't worth it. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video game characters who made the worst decisions. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, my personal gaming channel, where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. Hope that you have a fantastic day, my friend, whatever you are getting up to. Treat yourself with love and respect, because you bloody well deserve it, and do not let anyone or anything else tell you otherwise, okay? Go out there and absolutely smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.